Hello and welcome back to the Edge Podcast with Chip and Christy. I am Chip McCarter and as always my co-host Christy Ogle is with us. We have been covering marketing, talking about basically hundreds of ways to market your business and make more money. Uh, So we're just going to kind of keep adding on to that. We're going to push on to the next and talk about a bunch of marketing strategies that you can implement with your business to where you can start making more money, getting more clients, doing everything you need to do as a business owner. Um, Christy, for one, say hi to everybody and then jump us off. Let's start. Let's get this going. Hello. So what we have found is that most people that are in business are great skilled producers. They're good at baking the cupcakes. They're good at building the deck. They're good at cleaning the house. They're good at doing things uh, that they have chosen to do in their business. They're a great artist, but here's the problem. Most of them have no idea how to market their business. So in the last several weeks, we've been really working on how to market your business for free or very low cost to get more clients because winter's here. COVID's here. You need more business. I've seen so many businesses close because they don't know how to market. The one that wins in business markets or innovates the best. Those are the two functions of business. So that's why we've been going over these 50 shades of marketing. One that we want to talk about today that lots of people don't do is barter. For sure. I do it. Yeah. Yeah, I barter all the time. Yeah. And and as, as a business owner, you have a product or a service that is valuable, that's worth something. Um, And when you connect with these other business owners, you can kind of start seeing ways to save money, you know, save extra bucks monthly just by offering them a service for theirs, their product or service in return. Um, I've had so many good deals. I've saved so much money by doing this. Yeah. So when I was new in business, one thing that I did was I bartered for marketing because I knew that I needed to get my business on the television, on the radio, on billboards. So I looked at marketing businesses and the services they offered, and I marketed to them to get their marketing. Uh, People want what it is that you have. You just need to find them and figure out a way to barter it and you help each other. It's uh, one of the forms of a relationship. I help you, you help me. It's the second form of a relationship. So it works beautifully when a TV station needs cleaning or a TV station needs HVAC work because you're an HVAC person. Or if you're a roofer, (laughs) Mm. radio station needs a new flipping roof. How can you help people with your products and services? Because in the beginning of business, you have more time than you have money. And you can utilize that and make more money if you're smart about it. Yeah, and for sure. I, I would say, years, no. Yeah, oh, for sure. I would say, you know, be a little cautious. Don't, um, you want to make sure that whoever you're bartering with is going to be able to return the value to you. So. <laughs> You know, don't get ran over and don't get taken advantage of. But at the same time, and just because you're bartering doesn't mean that money's not involved. If your service or product is worth more, you know, don't just automatically make the barter. You know, yeah, I'll help you, but you, you're you going to have to pay me this. You know, Don't give, give them a discount because they're not going to give you one. Yeah, yeah, just still, exactly. And, mm-hmm. and but it bartering can, man, I mean, it can help you keep, keep the doors open. You know, like I, I definitely got a lot of deals in the beginning with digital marketing through the bartering system. Yeah. One of my favorite barters with, with a local um, radio station in Waco, it was an eyesore and um, they wanted the outside of the building painted because it was blue and chipping and all that kind of stuff. 
So I bartered our handyman services, you know, six, seven, eight years ago to paint the outside of their scrape and paint the outside of their building. And I got a year's worth of advertising for free. They paid for the paint and that kind of stuff. I paid for the labor. So it really worked out for me. But I do caution you when you're bartering with TV stations and radio stations and stuff like that. Let me tell you a nightmare that one of my employees did ship. Uh, she used to clean for the television station from, you know, 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. every day because that's when they weren't busy, right? So she would go in there and she had a set of keys that had like a hundred different keys on it for the TV station. And uh, she went in one day, about two or three months into our barter, and uh, she accidentally threw a bag of trash into the trash can along with all of those keys. Oh, no. That was a difficult conversation I had to have with television executives and eat some crow. We continued our uh, partnership over the mm -hmm. year, but uh, do know you have to treat a barter like you would treat a customer. Yeah, it's still a regular job. Mm -hmm. You got to do a good job because if not, you'll get fired and you'll lose that marketing. You'll lose the barter. Now, one mm -hmm. thing to remember when you're bartering is that you want to make sure and put it on your taxes because it is taxable. Oh, yeah, for sure. And that's, you know, something not a lot of people know or even do. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely something. Um, another great marketing uh, strategy, sponsor a team. And, oh my and gosh. We've, we've talked about this before. I might have even been last week, but sponsor a little league team. Sponsor your lo local high school team. Sponsor your local professional team. Well, even if it's minor league, sponsor some, get out there and sponsor. That's basically contextual marketing right there. You're, you know, you're, you're marketing with people in your area and everybody appreciates when you're supporting the community. You yeah. know, most, most people that pay taxes and, and work, they, they, they like that, you know, you're, so you, you kind of gain trust through It's so, there's so many good reasons to do this. Um, I, I, I tell people this all the time, sponsor a team. Yeah. So we talked a little bit about this last week um about sponsoring a team and it's great contextual uh content marketing but a lot of people do it wrong they'll sponsor the team and just expect the sales to come in it doesn't happen that way uh, i watched a show the other day shark tank and there was this business that actually was on shark tank and i googled them and uh i went on facebook and they had a thousand followers man you have millions of people watching you on shark tank utilize that shit put out a mm -hmm. press release start talking about it same yep. way with sponsoring a team. You sponsor a team, you write a check, they, they wear the logo, you know, on the mm -hmm. shirt or the back of the shirt. Don't stop there. Go to the baseball games, go to the football games, go to the basketball games, go to the tennis games. Take your stinking phone and take pictures. Mm -hmm. Tell people, if you take a picture of my shirt, I'll give you a $25 something you yep. want to utilize that to help you get more followers to get more customers to get more in your pocket don't just put it up there and then do nothing ever with it you want to utilize it over and over and over and over again and remind people hey like don't say hey i sponsored the team you want to go maybe a team member of the week you have to ask the parents right but yeah can I, you know, and then tag them and then you'll get those people because the idea of marketing, which most people miss, is to have people go out and get you more customers. It's not just to have that marketing up in it to bring you more customers. You want those customers you have to go and get for you. customers. So whether they've got a Facebook, like, you need to like, comment, and share all of that Little League stuff. If they don't have anything online or any presence online, 
you do it through your social media pages. It could be Facebook, which that's my favorite, you know. You could be on Instagram, it could be on TikTok, it could be on Snapchat, it could be on all these different forms, LinkedIn. You have to use your marketing yeah, yeah. to get you more customers. That's the whole idea. But most people put it up there and they're like, look, I sponsored a little LinkedIn. <laughs> Yay! And then they never talk about that shit again. You yeah. have to talk about it because if you do not, nobody knows. I I was just kind of thinking when we first started talking about it, I know uh, there was this business owner when I was a kid that sponsored a team and he would show up at the beginning of the season with all the new hats and jerseys. He took pride in sponsoring this team and he you know, was always there. He was at the Little League fields, just basically networking in all honesty. They, you know, he wasn't even just marketing anymore. He implemented networking into his marketing. And that, I mean, it was brilliant, though. You know, you get you get raving fans that swear by your work, you know, swear by and that. And that's when you start getting the exclusive leads that you want, the yep. ones that already know what they want. They know what you do and they're ready for your work, you know, or your product. But yeah, I and mean, be active, like show up, be proud of the team who cares yeah. if they're in last place that's your team be proud yeah. of them. they got your name on their backs what you're mm -hmm. talking about that guy you're creating an experience and of course you'll have raving fans so those kids yeah. grow up the number one influence in a family's life is their child it's usually a fort a teenage girl is the most influential <laughs> you, know, you got one like they can push you it do anything and if you create an experience for them the parents think man they care about my kids so go a step further maybe after they win a game you take them all out from ice cream at mcdonald's that's going to cost you 12 bucks but yeah. then you take pictures you go live you mm -hmm. tag everybody that's in there that is smart marketing that's what you call mcmarketing it's not the stuff you put it up there and it stays up there all year long and you hope you get one customer no <laughs> utilize it create experiences create raving fans and it's so simple to do jack your boy if he's on a team and somebody that you know put the name on the back of the shirts goes you know what let's i'll go to papa rollos yeah and i'm buying it's gonna cost you 100 bucks for little league kids right yeah would you ever forget them no you remember that stuff man and not just that the parents remember that stuff yeah. and that's and you know ultimately that's what you're looking for yeah you want to get into the parents hearts and yeah. through the children is one of the best ways to do it and sponsoring a team huh, that works yeah i love it so what about this next one hold a contest I've done contests a million times. It really helps, especially on your social media pages. Sure. I have some marketing companies that that is specifically what they do with their business owners is create contests. One that's huge in Waco is that stinking fair. I don't know if it's still going on or it's over, but I saw on so many pages win fair tickets. I've done win cupcakes, win cowboys tickets, win, you know, the college. Mm -hmm football teams tickets, the college football teams, basketball games. You can even do it for high school. So, I mean, having a contest, giving something away. I did a one year uh, free cleaning for one year and I had over 2000 people. Do you wanna know how much I spent on that ad? I just kept doing it over and over and <laughs> over and over again. And over 2000 people signed up for it cost me a couple thousand to pay payroll over a year but <laughs> I got tons of new customers from it so it really cost me nothing so i really believe in holding a contest not every month or every like maybe not but when there's big events coming on something you could do right now for any business it doesn't even have to be in alignment with your business you could do a haunted house. Oh, yeah, Halloween's coming up. You know, a pumpkin patch, the Robinson Farm, a day there. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it's going to cost you 20 bucks or 50 bucks for a family, but you'll have thousands of people do it. Somebody that does this with perfection in Waco is locals love us. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that. And that's how this is. Okay. Oh, they have well, this is how you get people to, to start um, liking your posts. You know, this is, this is, I've seen a lot of people use this strategy just to get likes, just to grow their page, you know, figure out, and sometimes it doesn't necessarily have to be a contest to win something. It's just figure out how to incentivize, incentivize and motivate your potential clients to start being active on your Facebook. Yes. Think of ways that you can get them because I'm going to stop my scroll if I see I have a chance at winning something, right? Yes. That's, a, that's a dead stopper and it works. So throw up. And then another big one, though, is kind of off topic of holding a contest. But a lot of these trivia questions are great ways to start getting people to interact. But holding a contest, man, that's as long as you do it right, as long as you market it correctly and you, it, it brings a lot of traffic. Yeah. In the, in the right kind of traffic. One thing to remember when you're running this contest. So I use something called click funnels. So mm -hmm. when they would click on that, they'd have to enter because it's great for them to be active on your social media. But as we know, after Facebook, Instagram apocalypse last week, that, mm -hmm. you know, if you lose that then what the hell are you going to do? Because Facebook's not going to be around forever. Let's be honest. MySpace, it's not around anymore. Snapchat's on the way out. Twitter's on the way out, right? How do you get that information? You have something that collects their name, their phone number, and their email. People yeah. go, well, emails, I get those all the time. No, every email address that you have is worth a dollar. Every phone number you have, it's like putting that hand under the waterfall of money that comes right i think a text message uh is worth five dollars if you've got their cell phone number so you need to have that information and then put them on a drip campaign that you're advertising to them again well chris you don't want to be annoying do you want to make money or do you want to worry about what other people say i could flip and care less if they think i'm annoying with my marketing I laugh all the way to the bank. So those are some important things that you need to get is their email address, their name and their phone number. The most important of those three, I would think is email address. Cause that yeah, and, and if you feel like you're overset, if you feel like you're overselling, just start adding value on the drip campaign. You don't have to keep selling, start, start figuring out ways. Look, there's tons of CRMs out there. You connect that CRM to start bringing it in. But there's also tons of software programs that will manage your drip campaign yes. without you having to do anything but set it up. Like just get it started and connect it to your website or connect it to your Facebook, whatever you need to connect it to. Exactly. Uh, but there, there, find a digital marketer around or get on Google and go down the rabbit hole and figure it out. Yeah. Because if Cause there's... It, following your page that that's good right you've got a little mm -hmm. bit of leverage but it's really uh kind of a cold lead when you have that email address that they've handed to you and the phone number they've handed to you that's warm that's hot yeah you want that kind of information and then you don't want to just sit on it you want to follow up with them if they don't like it, they'll unsubscribe. They'll quit following. For sure. Bye. Yeah. Some will, some won't. So what? Next. Exactly. Exactly. And this, it's just a, you know, think about it, figure out and figure out what kind of contest you can, you can run. And I would say that's my, my call to action for you guys this week. I uh, think about what kind of contest you can run on Facebook and, and do it. And just see what happens. You know, work it correctly, though, like we've been talking about. Yeah, um, my most successful contest that I ever had, hands down, 
wasn't giving away handyman services or cleaning services. What it was, was a dozen cupcakes. And I went to a cupcake place that on Thursday was their lowest day that they would have cupcakes for a dollar or $2. I would go and get a spread of cupcakes. I took a picture the week before I ran the contest, Monday through Thursday. And then I gave it away Thursday. I went live when I drew who was gonna get it. I went live when they came to pick up those stinking cupcakes. I really wanted to lick them all, but I didn't, Chip, I didn't. <laughs> and I would take that picture and I would blow it up Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then I'd start all over again on Monday. I did this for a good six weeks and I got over 1,000 new followers. That's how I have seven to 8,000 followers on my handyman and cleaning page instead of just 20, 30, 40, 100, like most handyman services have, is by having that contest. And that's why I make 10 times more than the average handyman. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's that's exactly why. And you have to just stay consistent with it and get out there and do it. Uh, I'll even remind you at the end of the podcast. I want to address one thing. People are going to go, well, Christy, you're in a handyman in a cleaning business. What the hell does that have to do with cupcakes? Absolutely nothing. No. But I know my customers. My customers are families. Most of those families don't afford those luxuries for their kid on a random Thursday afternoon. So I market towards the family, not just one or two cupcakes. I had a dozen cupcakes. There was a lady that came in that had nine children. She's like, perfect amount of cupcakes for my kids. So <laughs> keep that in mind. It doesn't always have to align with what your business is. If you have an SEO business, you want to blow it up on social media, you can give away a week's worth, I don't know, of whatever. You can give away cupcakes, right? Or cookies. Well, you, something. Yeah, concert tickets. Think of stuff that everybody loves. And uh, and and because people are gonna bite, you know, just find something that you know that everybody likes and have it as the prize. And you know, maybe make maybe make it like a, a trivia about your niche or something, you know? Hey, you can win these tickets to this concert to see whoever, um, but you got to answer these questions or something like that, you know, and then have them some, something simple about like if you're a maid service, have them answer questions like how many times, you know, or, you know some, some kind of common knowledge, like what disinfectant do you use? Up your home. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Have that contest question, FYI, the average. <laughs> um, so just know your customers and know that you know this can really help you climb up the SEO space. It can also help you. Is it the algorithms of Facebook chip that they're yeah. crawling up with something like that when people comment, like, share your page? Yeah. Well, you up there so that more people actually see it and i never put money into these marketing campaigns and they were some of the best campaigns that i ever had yeah you don't really even have to when you're giving something away you don't even necessarily have to boost the post or anything people people love giveaways yeah and they um, share it with their friends they share it in groups that's another thing share it in some social media groups i didn't do that back then Ooh, maybe i need to have a contest for sure uh, yeah let's do it um the next one what is your message? What is your, you know, what is it that you do? What are you saying to your customers? Is it what they want to hear or is it what you want to say? Um, and that's, that's a huge one because you are the problem solver of a specific problem that, that the potential client has. So you need to figure out, am I just saying what I want to say or am I actually appealing to, to them? What's my message? Is it clear enough? Is it is it not too long? Uh, I mean, you you want it to be compact and to the point. Um, but what are you selling? You know, why why is it? What what do you have that stands out and makes you different from the next? Exactly. Most business owners fall in love with their business, their product, their service, and not their customers. When you're marketing to a customer, you want to think about your 
message. You want to think about what it is that they're laying in bed at night worrying about before they meet you. So you want to solve their problem and then you want to speak to that problem. You need to be crystal clear in your message to your customers and clients because if you're not, a confused mind never buys. So your message, your mission, your, your marketing has to be crystal clear and not have any doubt in the mind what it's really all about. Exactly. You, you have to, I mean, this is something you sh everybody should do at, when they first start their business. That's, it's what everybody should do anyways, is to know your why and to figure out what your message is and what problems are you solving. Um, I'll consistently say this, you have to be solving a problem almost at all times. Find their pain points, poke at them, you know, figure it out. You know, that's, that's you, you can, uh, it's, once you start actually looking into it, it, it kind of unfolds for you, but you have to focus on it. You have to actually look into it and dig deep, figure out your why and your message. Yeah, and you have to talk about it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. You're going to get sick of hearing it, but your customer's not. So use that marketing and cut it up on all different forms of social media and do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. As an entrepreneur, you don't have to recreate your space all the time. My marketing that I use in some of my businesses is from years ago and it just still resonates with my customers. So know that you will get stuck up your message way before they do. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Definitely. And this, and the next one, but they go hand in hand. Like you, what is your message? Get it out there and be reachable. <laughs> like once once you start getting your message out there, they need to be able to contact you. You need to be available. You need to have the click to call phone number. You know, Facebook automatically does it for you. But on your website, make sure you have a click to call on every page, a email submission form. Make sure your messenger set up on Facebook correctly. Um, there and messenger is awesome you can actually have automated responses that you create so it doesn't sound like a bot, um, respond to these guys. And it can be super, per you, you can be yourself with it instead of like a robot response, be creative, um, but, uh, but answer the phone, answer the email. Look, Facebook tells you this company replies real, like yeah. they'll tell you exactly what their average reply time is. And you do not want to be the one that says, replies within a day maybe you know or two days you want to be replies within the hour you want to systematize your different forms of communications with your customers uh so what i've noticed is a lot of businesses will put up a facebook page they'll put up a website with a submission form they'll get on yelp they'll get on google business they'll get on um all these different ways to communicate and when you do that you need to systematize it so they all go into one we have a software that it all goes into one and i get a notification when one way to communicate with somebody is on there. I have to tell you, one of the most frustrating things is when I call a business and they don't answer, I just go on to the next person on Google. Another frustrating thing is, you know, I'm busy like everybody. I'll send them a message on Facebook and six weeks later, they'll be like, you wanted to get your hair cut? <laughs> no, I'm good now. Like, yeah. so be reachable. Now I'm going to speak to customers because I know some customers listen to us sometimes. Be patient. We're business owners. We're busy. We can't always call you back within a minute. Be patient with small businesses right now because we're understaffed and overworked like everyone, right? Mm hmm don't expect that instant gratification, even if you see I'm online, because I could be marketing 
like give me a second to give back to you. One thing I've noticed since COVID's happened is human beings are very, very impatient. Us as business owners need to be responsive, yes. But do you realize we have lives also. We have families. Give us an hour or two to respond. Or if we say, hey, we'll call you back this evening, be okay with that. Yeah, for sure. And, but you gotta be reachable though. I mean, I, I hear it all the time. Uh, and I've actually gone down lists of specific niches to where they, uh, oh, sorry. I've gone down specific lists to niches to where, you know, it's, and I've called all these businesses and like maybe one picked up out of 10. Um, and that one is the one that's going to make the money. And that's, that's, it's crazy, but that's the truth. Why, why are they missing? They're just watching money fly by. And I did that at one point with some of my leads. I was like, why am I watching this go by? So I just started taking them. <laughs> exactly. You have to. Also, when you answer the phone or you respond to an email or a Facebook message, another one of my pet peeves is when I call a business, I was calling uh, the River Safari last summer to go on a cruise with my husband in Waco. And they answered the phone after the ninth ring. It was the only one back then that uh, actually had the river safari. And he answers the phone and he's like, hello. Hi, is this the Waco river safari? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I do. Hold on a second. And then I hear him yell at his kids and he came oh, no. back and he's like, uh, you want to go on a cruise? Um, yeah, but are you the captain? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hard with this guy. So, I mean, be reachable, but also be professional. If you have a handyman service or you have an HVAC service, I know a lot of you guys run it from your trucks, right? A lot of service based mm -hmm. businesses run it from their vehicle. And they answer the phone with, <sighs> they're up on the top of a ladder. They're, hello? Like, yeah. call them back. Don't answer the phone right then. Be reachable, but be yeah. smart. You don't want to fall off the ladder. You don't want to wreck the truck, right? So yep. be reachable, but also be professional because I'm going to use somebody that answers the phone professionally instead of a guy that's like, uh, hello, or, yeah. you know, he answers I, the phone and he has a droopy dog kind of sound. Uh, <laughs> next. Yeah. Be reachable, but also be professional too. For sure. No, I agree. This next one, it's something I'm actually guilty of not doing, but I see the value. Handwritten thank you notes. Yes. And I, I, it's basically, when's the last time you've read a handwritten thank you note? When's the last time you've received a handwritten thank you note? It's so much more personal. Um, I believe you do it with sometimes spouse for like Christmas cards. I know that you make those personal and uh, it's, it's just old school to the point where people appreciate that. Yeah. People appreciate, they know you took the time and effort. It's not some typed up once and sent out to thousands of people. Uh, it's, you know, specific to the client that you're writing the thank you note to. And man, trust me, it goes a long way. Uh, even saying thank you, even following up, this is what brings back, this is what makes customers clients. Yes, they come back over and over and over again. In the beginning of Sometimes Spouse, I used to hand write those notes. And then when we got yeah. up to about 200 customers a month, uh, it was signatures. And now uh, we'd still send thank you cards out, but it's in batches. Yeah. Uh, but when you're in the very beginning of your business, this can transform it. Because like Chip said, when's the last time you got a handwritten thank you note? I got one last week. But that's because I send them out to people. I send uh, yeah. five thank you cards a day out as a practice because gratitude is the most uh, powerful thing in the universe. So I like to send it out every single day and it comes back to me tremendously. But when I received that handwritten note, I hadn't gotten one for a while. I yeah. say it's sitting on my desk now uh, to mm -hmm. show my husband. So those handwritten notes, make them know that you're thinking about them and that you care about them. And handwritten means you actually took a few minutes of your time to jot something down. 
It's definitely worth your 52, 55 cents. I don't even know how much a stamp is anymore, but it is worth it to put that into your marketing dollar. And if you're going, well, I don't have any customers, send it to your kids' um, teachers. That's what I did in the beginning. I sent it to my kids' as teachers. I sent it to my hairstylist. I sent it to people that helped me out in business. And I got these mm -hmm. raving fans that have never left. Yeah. And it, it's, um, it's just like stopping the scroll. You know, it just, it makes people pay attention more. You're giving them way more personable uh, treatment than 99.9% .9 of other businesses by doing this, taking this extra step. Um, it's and just following up further on thank you cards. So if you're in a business like, um, Joanna Gaines, I think I read somewhere that Joanna Gaines to get the attention of HGTV producers, she didn't just send cards or letters or accolades. What she did was she sent a box to the producer that gave them an experience because as a CEO, I don't necessarily read all of the mail. I don't necessarily go through all of the emails. I have two gatekeepers before they can even get to me. But if there's a package that comes in, I'm the one that opens it. So that is a way to get past the gatekeeper and get the attention. It could be full of whatever your product is. That's how people utilize influencers. It can't be just a box that says, hey, use me, right? It is a box full of stuff that they like. Maybe if you're selling crystals, you put crystals in something or you put an essential oil roller in there. If you're into that kind of thing, I am, of course, because that's what I'm grabbing from my box. I get all the time. So um, that is a wonderful way as a hand hand giving gift with a handwritten note you know it's going to be it does cost more but if you've got an average value sell of 997 dollars and you spend 20 dollars on a box to get a customer it's worth it for sure no doubt about it and speaking of handing people stuff business cards oh my do you have do you have one are you passing them out where are all they do you have a place that you can set them that has high traffic that where people come through where they can just grab them? Have you asked the corner store that you go to every day to get your coffee, to set a few business cards on their counter? You know, make the more, it's just hands, just more hands in the waterfall. And anytime that I can think of a way to bring, to, to bring more people to know what I do, and to understand that I'm good at it and to start trusting me, I, I take advantage of it. And business cards is a huge one. And this is one that people get stuck on. This is what, where the imperfect action comes into play. You might not be able to make the perfect business card, but I tell you this, it doesn't matter. I promise you this. I, I'm, if I want to use them, I'm going to use them regardless, whether it's a fancy business card or just a regular old square with the name, phone number, and what they do. Uh, you know, it's, that's all there really has to be is because if you think about it, you're just giving them your name and number and what you do. So don't overcomplicate a very simple thing. Yeah, I went to networking meetings all across the state. And one of the first questions I have when I meet somebody that I want to collaborate with, because I'm not necessarily not everybody's on LinkedIn, not everybody's on Facebook, not everybody's on um, Google, right? But I meet mm -hmm. somebody and I want to collaborate with them. My first question is, you got a card? And they're like, no, but I can text it to you. Well, I don't give out my personal phone number. So you're not texting it to me. So a business card is so important. And one thing that I've learned over, you know, my seven, eight years in business is you want to be a little bit different than the other guy. Yeah. So one way that I decided to be different was to have a, a business card that is curved, kind of like this one. I like it like mm -hmm. a credit card. They don't throw it away. They put it in their wallet and they keep it right. But mm -hmm. another thing I do is I put a $25 gift certificate on the mm -hmm. back of the card 
so that they can utilize that business card and they'll keep it because it's a gift card or they'll give it to somebody else. So instead of getting those business cards that y'all throw away, put something of value on the business card. Think about what your customer is that wants. Well, Chris, did you go out there and do, you know, clean a toilet for $25? No. It says in the very bottom on fine print that we do have a minimum and they have to purchase the minimum from us of $149. So then they can use the $25 gift card. But this is something that stops their scroll because nobody has a gift card on the back of their business card. That's freaking crazy. Christy, mm -hmm. how'd you learn this? I modeled after somebody else that had a carpet cleaning business and took it and put it with my maid business. Yeah, and it's brilliant. It works. Yeah. For sure. No, it's like two birds, you know, two birds with one stone kind of deal. Yeah. And business cards don't work though if you don't work them. You could yeah. have you could have a thousand business cards stacked in front of you, but if you don't go and pass them out, they don't do anything for you. So in the beginning of business, I used to stick business cards in the driver's side door at the mall or target i like to go into places where people had more money so i'd go to target yeah go to the heb i would go to the mall i was thinking where are these people going and spending money and i would go and put it on the driver's side door in the window still eight years later people would go you left a card on my car at target and i've still got it <laughs> like it works oh. Now, be cautious when you do this at the HEBs because they don't like it. You want to go somewhere where there's no security. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> For sure. But pass sure. the cards. Don't just send them there. Sitting them there won't make you any money. Getting them out there in people's hands will make you money. Mm -hmm. And if you're like, well, Chris, you don't know how to design a card. Get with somebody that does know how to design a card. Super simple. And there's tons of platforms, man. Go check out Canva. You can, there's apps on your phone that make simple logos for you. There's tons of ways to do it for super cheap yeah. and, uh, and sometimes free. Yeah. Uh, you you got to find the right place. Um, another one, and this is kind of, we can talk about this in two different ways, billboards. Um, there's the physical billboards that we see every day when we're driving. And then there's Facebook advertisements, because that is technically, most people aren't looking out the window of their car anymore. They're looking down into their lap on their phone. Um, but, but you know, I tell you what, man, billboards are still good for contextual con, you know, people know where you are. It's just a big sign. I don't, I've never personally done it. Christy, have you ever had a billboard? Yeah, I've had multiple billboards throughout the state. I've had one on I-35. I've had one uh, in the Hewitt area. I had multiple in the Waco area. I bartered for it. Um, mm -hmm. But one thing I did wrong when I did that is I didn't have a call to action. Like call today and receive $25 off. It's great to have brand awareness, but the majority of people that put their businesses up. I remember when I lived in China Spring, Texas, that there was an electronic billboard and it had Molly Maids on it. And it just said Molly Maids and it had their logo, right? And it was really hard to see on this electronic billboard. And I thought, man, if they had Molly Maids in Waco, Texas, if you're listening, if you had a call to action, <laughs> on there you would get more people to call you from the billboard because when we see it over and over and over again it's like i'll drive to work and think how the hell did i get here right i'm not going to yeah. remember the billboards that i see all the time so you want something that stops their scroll but they keep on driving so have like a discount or a call to action or something that's gonna benefit them to call you instead of everybody else. Because the majority of people out there in your business category have no clue to market. They think if I just get it out there, that's great. But what you want is the customer or client to interact with you, to call you, to go to your website, to do something. Because I see this stuff all the time. And if it doesn't call me to do something, I'll do anything with it. For sure. 100%. And, and um, it's just like anything else, you, you want it to be catchy, you know, you need it to be to catch their eye and also their attention. 
So, you know, make sure you knock both those out. You got to have some cool to look at, but also interesting to read. Um, clothing, Lo yeah. you know, they call it swag now, you know, getting swag for your business, getting a hat with your logo on it, t-shirts. I mean, you can do anything, socks, jackets. Underwear. And, yeah, this is another way to make money too. You can sell your, you know, your apparel, um, but yeah. you also give it out though. You just give it out to tons of people. And, and I'll tell you what, what, what's really popular right now, at least in Waco for sure, is these business hats. These companies are coming up with these cool hats. And I, I rarely see like a Nike hat uh, or even a sports team hat anymore. <clears throat> it's almost all construction companies and real estate companies hats, you know. Um, but if, if you think about it, though, that's people like those cool looking hats and they're not that expensive. You can go to a place like Axiom or someplace that does it and, and get a bunch of hats or shirts and pass them out because that's just another billboard on a person. It is. I remember the day that I was at the Waco flea market this summer that I saw somebody walking by and they had one of my hats on. And I thought, how the hell do they have one awesome. of those? It's like, oh yeah, we gave them away for a short period of time. So that's kind of cool. Or you see your name on the back of somebody's shirt or the front of somebody's yeah. shirt. That is a walking billboard. It's going to catch people. Wow. Yeah. And it's going to get sure. it which is what you want so it's so inexpensive to do now you know with canva and vista print um but if you've got like jackets that you like get them embroidered if you've got blouses you like get them embroidered 10 12 bucks somebody that's good that can do a small quantity for you to wear around to networking events that you might be going to or when you're out and about running around people will notice oh for sure yeah and yeah, I mean, I've been looking into doing that for sure. It's a great way to get other people to start working for you without really working for you, you know. Um, and uh, also last for today, just for this week, obviously not the last thing, that strategy that we'll ever talk about, but host an event. And this is anywhere from in-person to online. Uh, Facebook is great about hosting on events online. Use a Facebook, create a group, and you know have events about well whatever you can have an event just for like a bounce house drinks and uh, like drinks and pizza and bring them all in and let people have fun but under your business name you know like uh just sponsored by you and that's um and again this is all like the law of reciprocation the more value you add to people the more you're going to get value added back to you um these events online are crucial, but in person nowadays, if you can pull that off, you, you're, you're doing something right, for sure. You can have an open house to your business. You could have, mm -hmm. you could act, and you're, if you're going, well, I work out on my truck, Christy. Well, you could yeah. rent a place and have an event of some sort like Chip is talking about. And what happens is you create these raving fans, kind of like when you sponsor that little league team, have an event celebrating the little league team or have an event where you're teaching people how to clean their HVAC systems because you're an HVAC person. You don't want to go out and clean their HVAC. <laughs> you can add value and then they have an issue that comes up with their HVAC. They're going to call you if you have an online event showing them how to do it. If you're a roofer, how to keep your roof clean in Texas from all the dust and stuff that comes. Maybe you power wash a roof. I don't even know if that's a thing, Chip. But have an event and then have it online. Well, what if I mess up? Delete it. Like yeah. <laughs> sort of event. So it takes you from obscurity to omnipresence because most people don't do it. They don't think about their marketing. They outsource their marketing and it's no fun. It's like outsourcing your sex life. <laughs> no yeah. fun, right? So you've got to utilize yourself as the brand and then market it in such a way that it goes out and it brings you more customers. You've got to think like that 
or you're going to be poor like the average business owner in America that makes 30 to 36K a year. You can make more money. You just got to figure out the marketing piece. For sure. And it's, and on these events, Facebook has ways for, for people to pay to even be in your event. You can do it free. But Christy's right. You should, even if it's, it doesn't have to be an actual event. It can be a like teaching, like a class kind of deal where you're just educating your potential clients or you're just educating your, your past clients that yeah. are still with you. You know, you, you want to, I always kind of look at it this way. I want to keep what I already have and I want to grab everything else <laughs> and put it in there too. So definitely, you know, don't forget, pay attention to the, your past clients just as much as you pay attention to the clients moving on in the future, the ones coming in. For well, sure. Kip and I are actually launching a new business. It's called McMarketing 101 because we have been working with business owners for years. And what we found is the majority have this amazing idea, but they have no clue how to get it out there in front of thousands of people. So they're living in this kind of poverty state of their business. They're, they're working and they're white knuckling it, right? Surviving, but there is a different way. And we've come up with this marketing program that makes it simple for every business to get seven leads in seven days. They get seven yeah. new customers by just following this simple program. Yeah, for sure. And the McMarketing 101's focus is helping you achieve your goal, the, what you set out to initially. Um, there's gonna be coaching involved, you know, with Christy and I being the coaches, we'll bring other professionals that have been in the business, uh, whatever, you know, niche they're in, but we're gonna bring other people in. It's basically, just to focus on your business and put what you need into it. Um, yeah. Instead of trial and error, trial and error, why not listen to people that have already ran their head against the wall and figure out how not to. And that's what we want to give you guys. That's why we want, you know, we're going to have live coaching every week after this first challenge. We're going to have a lot of very personal um, help to, for your business, especially if you jump on at the beginning, I guarantee you'll get, a lot more personal help if you jump on from the very beginning uh, then you come in later yeah for sure <clears throat> but mcmarketing 101 is you know it's going to always have a challenge get seven customers in seven days now it, it's guaranteed if you work it correctly but if you just like we always talk about if you just half-ass it if you just put it out there and don't work it you're not going to get the return you want you're not going to get those seven new clients in seven days. You have to, you have to want it. You have to be hungry. You have to be ready for that next level. And you have to just be ready to start taking action instead of second guessing yourself, mm -hmm. start moving forward. And that's what we want. We want to give you the momentum you need to, to do what you want to do with your business. You know, we, we don't know what your goal is without you telling us, but we want you to achieve it regardless. Yeah, what we found is there's so many people out there that have these amazing businesses. And I remember when I started my businesses, you know, seven or eight short years ago, that I would sit there in my office and I felt like I was banging my head against the wall. I had this amazing business that does these amazing things, but how do I get the average, you know, family to click to call or how do I get them to come to me because I can't go out there and drag them. They've got to come willingly, right? <laughs> so yeah. Over the years, Chip and I have paid the stupid tax. We know what marketing works for every type of business and what doesn't. Part of our genius is, is that Chip has the online technical stuff. He's a millennial, so he knows a lot more. And probably you, because the average business owner is a generation Xer or a baby boomer. 
And then I, part of my genius is I know how to write to the customer. I know what problem you're solving. You know, I talked to somebody yesterday that had a stinking CBD business. And she's like, Christy, how do I get these pot gummies into people's hands? And I said, well, let me tell you what you need to do. You need to talk about their aches, their pains, that sort of thing. Not, hey, try these CBD gummies. They're great. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah their pain and how you're going to overcome it and this is what we talk about we go through all the different forms of marketing in this challenge that's going to get the biggest return on your investment so mcmarketing 101 okay. forward slash one the challenge begins on october 25th go october. to marketing 101 mcmarketing 101.com forward slash one to get started in this free challenge for sure, uh, October twenty fifth. Be ready, because it's gonna the ball is just gonna keep rolling from there, and we're gonna keep helping you grow and grow from there. Um, Christy, is there anything else that we needed to touch on before we wrap it for the week? No, just go to McMarketing one hundred and one and join our new group. Yeah, check it out. Uh, www.mcmarketing one hundred and one uh, forward slash one, and join up in. We're still working on the funnel, still working on the websites, but it'll all be ready October 25th. And we definitely want to see you there, guys. But for now, it's Chip and Christy with the Edge Podcast. We love you. Stay safe.